Good morning. Welcome to our home. We are in a magical place in Piazza 25 Aprile. This is the Milanese headquarters of Tecno in Zanotta. It is a place in Milan that connects the historic part of the city, Brera, with the most modern part of it and the future. Today we're here to tell you the story of the 50 years of Quaderna and about the collaboration between this very innovative company and Super Studio. That has been a particularly important period of uh, radical design that has seen this company follow the utopias and the innovations of Super Studio that has represented an important uh, reference point of radical design in Italy and worldwide. I would also like to tell you that uh, this year marks the 50th anniversary of the debut of uh, Italian design in the United States and in particular at the moment where Super Studio was present to tell you the story of Quaderna. What is Quaderna? It is a timeless product, a product that has always been in this company's collection for the last 72 years. It is a product that has a meaning, as it is a product that has never followed a style, it is a product that clearly identifies new trends. The old style is gone, new consumers are looking for new styles and new are devoting their attention to new things following their passions in a much more sophisticated uh, manner compared to the past. And I would also like to tell you of a moment when we did the uh, Tecno Zanotta transaction and Toraldo di Francia came to see me. He wanted to understand why we carried out the transaction. He wanted to um, understand the intuitions that were behind the vision of the world, a world made of connections, a world made of relationships, and to some extent, um, a world made of tiny little squares. It should be remembered that with uh, great foresight, they were capable of indicating connections 10 years before the internet was born. In this moment, we have uh, here some of our products in display, and it is a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Enrico Cavallari, the CEO of uh, um, Zanotta and Tecno, and Enrico Morteo telling us a little bit more about this collection and about Super Studio. Thank you. Good morning, and uh, thank you, Giuliano Sosconi. Thanks for the invitation. That gives me a chance to go back to some of the most extraordinary and beautiful pages of Italian design, a very fruitful moment in time when so many things were happening, when the radical avant-garde succeeded in summarizing an extraordinary flow of energies. And I have to say that uh, in front of such unusual objects, apparently so simple as if they had been drawn by a child enchanted by a sheet of a notepad, I would almost be tempted to tell you a story full of irony, of lightness, and, uh, you know, tell you about some of the episodes of the meeting between uh, Super Studio and Aurelio Zanotta, and tell you that these young Florentine architects designed these objects as if it was uh, something simple as it if it was a goliardic joke, a, an irony. That's the way things appear, but uh, probably they're not entirely so, because if there's no doubt that the young people of Super Studio were young guys and as such cheerful and funny, uh, they were also culturally highly committed to the Italian architectural scene and to what was happening around 
around them and especially very interested in on the international scene they were you know shrewd attentive they knew exactly what was going on Adolfo Natalini, Toraldo di Francia, and I will mention all the names because it's important to remember them. These two were the founders, but soon Giampiero uh, Frasinelli, Alessandro, Roberto Magri, and Alessandro uh, Poli came along. Yes, they were cheerful and amused people, but uh, uh, for sure, not only that. You know, those were difficult years, the 60s were years in which people felt that they were in a crisis. They had doubts concerning the ability of architectural culture to solve the problems of the city and, their, and its reconstruction due to the end of the war. And the metropolis had, was growing exponentially. The rationalism and rational thinking seemed to, to have failed. Um, the model of the English new towns uh, failed. They were built around functionalist criteria with the city center, shopping center, bus station, office air, factory, uh, neighborhood. But they were all sad cities that could not give, give back a density of relationship and encounter that represents the profound identity of a city. Uh, Le Corbusier's Trangregar failed, Oscar Niemeyer's Brasilia failed, not even the socialist neighborhood of Scandinavian architecture uh, succeeded, and not even the diaspora of uh, German functionalist architects managed to bring around the world the idea of a city that could uh, work appropriately. So this represents the failure of uh, architecture to core, especially in terms of the optimistic possibility that the uh, coming together of the industry economic, of economic growth and cultural development would lead to a, an extensive social welfare. This was true in some parts of the world, but uh, uh, life continued to be a life of uh, alienation, a poor life. So trying to go different ways resulted in some uh, new directions. Some people turned to look back to the morphology of the city and uh, they looked for um, those characteristics that could give back a meaning to contemporary cities. This was then done by Adorossi and by the whole Tendenza movement. And um, these trends uh, influenced the entire world, but also Colin Rowe, uh, who was a source of inspiration for the New York File, or Whitney, Whitney and Siegel, Eisman, in short, the great thought of contemporary New York uh, architecture was nourished by this reflection and by the idea that within the city there could be new germs and new nuclei around which a new meaning could be generated. Then there were the more utopian groups, the more utopian groups such as Archigram in England, the Metabolism group in Japan. It was a way of projecting far into the future and all of them and different ways thought that the solution could be an enormous increase in the uh, design technology used for the product project. So cities made of prefabricated components that could be assembled and disassembled, lightweight tensile structures that could be dismantled and uh, uh, reassembled in some other places with uh, great dynamism. You know, uh, if you have an idea what the Berber Bobourg looks like in Paris, you know what this means. But then there is a very Italian way, a third way. Let me quote a statement from Andrea Branzi. One shouldn't escape into the future or go back to the past, but abandon oneself to the decline of this culture and be overwhelmed by the end of rationalism 
and by breaking up these rules, one finds new spaces of uh, uh, freedom, moments in which to experiment new forms, new thoughts, architecture, and projects. These were the spaces in which young Italian design started to uh, work. In fact, uh, uh, protests in Italy are not to close of the world of uh, art. In fact, uh, just think of uh, the emotions uh, that permeate uh, American informal art, expressionism and brutalism, an idea that is no longer simply the representation of reality, but its distortion. The American pop art is the most extraordinary example of it, with the caustic criticism apparently starting from a description of reality. And a pile of Campbell's soups is the most ironic vision of a consumer society of a supermarket sun suddenly turned into an art gallery. But projects do not necessarily um, have to adopt these languages. Having freed themselves from too many constraints, now they turn and look for uh, them elsewhere. They do not look for uh, such constraints in politics. The Italian protest is not a political thought. It is a deeply joyful and optimistic thinking, which some, somehow tries to make a revolution starting from changes in people's behavior. These are the years when uh, young Italian designers design upholstered sofas in which one can sit in a different way than the composed and somewhat rigid way of sitting. It is from here, from the observation of behaviors, that a new way of designing is uh, triggered. It is not accidental that one of the most interesting moments in Italy um, back then was the uh, design of uh, archi of um, discotheques. Those were the years of uh, the Piper discotheque. The discotheque is a multifaceted environment that takes on the shape from the behaviors of people who are in them. They are places where one experiments with new musical forms. The Piper in Turin designed by Piero De Rossi was not just a disco, it was a meeting place where people went uh, in the evening to have a drink and dance and forget about uh, the day. It was like, like going to see an exhibition of by Michelangelo Pistoletto, who was one of the protagonists of the new art movement that uh, was becoming uh, fashionable those days. So Pistoletto still mirrors may, made their debut and this could take um, space didn't have to be occupied by objects or furnished by objects, but it was the behavior of people that defined the shape of uh, the spaces. There was a light machine on the ceiling that could move around and illuminate different areas uh, of the discotheque. The entrance staircase was a musical machine by Davide Mosconi, who was a great creative man who could uh, invent uh, scenarios, uh, artificial scenarios and landscapes. And descending the staircase, one could create uh, uh, totally different musical rhymes every time. So the gestures of people defined the shape of a space. An object is no longer simply functional. It does not serve a purpose, but it is the way we move uh, that uh, makes a difference. We ask objects to be accelerators of our emotions. It was a profound change from the good design of the German school, of the Bauhaus, or of the Ulm school. Everything changes to some extent, and if objects change, architecture can also change. If it is no longer the use that determines, uh, if it is no longer the use that is uh, determined by the form of the function, the reverse, reversal of this paradigm could also apply. So this kind of material is uh, more conceptual than formal, and Adolfo Natalini, Toraldo di Francia, and some other students of those very important years 
that gave life to the Archism group, who were the great protagonist of the Florentine radical scene with Super Studio, Andrea Branzi, Massimo Morotti, Paolo Di Danello, were invited to organize an exhibition at the Galleria Jolly in Pistoia in 1966, the Annus Horribilis of the Flooding in Florence. It is beautiful to watch all this through the photographs of the exhibition in that gallery. It is a colorful landscape uh, where soft armchairs like uh, upholstered soft ziggurats alternate with lamps that look like flowers called the passion flowers. But if you look at the sketches uh, made by Natalini that summer when he was preparing the exhibition, you can see very clearly that there is a certain rigorous structure behind all this. The flower is actually born from a bundle of tubes cut from a plane that determines the shape of the flower's petals. Basically, there's uh, no artistic gesture of uh, uh, or artistic creativity, there is a thought which becomes a form, but it is a pop object in the most English sense of the term. It is colorful and cheerful, and it is precisely this lively, vibrant space that becomes the scenario of this first exhibition that resulted in the birth of Super Studio on the one side and Archizoom on the other. Objects are free from a functional obligation, they are instead full of poetic charges. Uh, they are objects with poetic reactions. The first who perhaps ventured down this road was Ettore Sozzas. So architecture uh, can be uh, con conceived in a different way, no longer as a child of the city's master plan. You can think of architecture as if it were a children's game, an assembly of simple elements like the wooden cubes or dice we use to play games. So a cylinder, a plane, a cube that put together do define a shape. So in uh, 1969, the histograms uh, took shape. Uh, the name was not um, found out by Super Studio, but rather by Eduardo Bencinelli, who was a geneticist, a friend of theirs, um, one of the Italian scientists of the 20th century to whom genetics owes so much, like, for example, the decoding of the DNA. And when he saw these objects that were uh, three dimensional chessboards in space, it defined them as histograms because they were unfinished three-dimensional grids, objects that had no scale. One wouldn't know how big they were. They could be small or big or infinite, enormous, but they became the matter with which the people of Super Studio begin to compose the world, a theoretically infinite surface, a continuous surface, which could become a catalog for villas, but could also be um, applied on a planetary level. Toraldo di Francia was a very good photographer and uh, uh, he could make marvelous colleges. Um, it drew a sketch that would uh, connect the Earth to the Moon, but it could also be reduced to a very small scale. In preparation for an exhibition organized by Castelli e Torresazzo's uh, um, Andrea Branzi Super Studio Archizum called La Superficie Neutra, the neutral surface, they drew this infinite equipotential grid without following, following a rule or a standard. On a smaller scale, with a three by three centimeters square that they had, um, that they translated into um, a material uh, utilizing um, the products produced by Abbott Print. And with this, they invented a collection of furniture that they called the Misura which included a bed, a table, and so on. The project was first proposed to Cassina and Porto Nova Cassina was one of the reference companies 
on the architectural scene back then, but neither of the two had the courage to put in production a piece of furniture that was so radical, so abstract. In an object, it was much more a concept than an object. The one who actually was so courageous so as to dare more was Aurelio Zanotti, the most visionary of all Italian industrialists who produce uh, Gatti, Polini, Teodoro's Sacco. He was someone who knew how to look far ahead, who knew how to sit behind the apparent nothingness of this design, and he saw the richness, the depth, the great thought behind it. The extraordinary thing about this object is that they are still contemporary. They have lost nothing in the course of time. They unveil how maximum freedom needs an order and a rule. They do little squares for furniture pieces, but when we imagine it on a scale of a seed, it was a kind of an equipotential network that carried uh, energy everywhere, defining encounters and relationships within space. Every point is a moment of richness, of richness, of extraordinary richness. The idea that order and freedom can be reconciled, that one is not the opposite of the other, is the reason why these objects are still with us after so many years. They still talk to us. We can imagine them as the squared sheets of a notepad on which we learn to do mathematics, but in reality, perhaps, we only play novel battles on them. We play games with them. But in reality, they are much more than that. It is precisely the freedom that lies within this grid that seduces us today. Freedom means to be able to continue to imagine this piece of furniture. And it is no coincidence that from Super Studios archives, other drawings and hypotheses have been generated, as such as this one which is a tiny, light writing desk, a small, lightweight object that is very well suited to today's home, where you can create a studio anywhere, you know, transform a little, small console into something new and adequate to present time, something very useful and fit for purpose. The apparent uselessness of these objects is actually uh, the fact that they are fit for any purpose at all. But uh, in order to talk about new products and uh, new perspectives of the new collection, um, I uh, believe I should leave the floor to Enrico Cavallari, the CEO's managing director, to whom I leave the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Enrico Cavallari is my name. I am the CEO of Techno and Zanotta since January this year. It is one of the first times I talk to all of you and I'm very pleased about that. I would like to welcome all of our clients, the architects and interior designers with whom we work on a daily basis. I would like to welcome our agents and stress the fact that without this network, we could not exist. It is important to meet, it is important to share um, ideas on the products we bring on the market. First of all, the novelties we're taking to the market. Zanotto is a brand, is a brand that has been existing since 1954. And it is uh, the intuition of uh, a genius, uh, Aurelio Zanotta, Enrico and uh, Giuliano mentioned him already. He's a person who manages to open up the way for the possibility of having people work together and orchestrate their work. Uh, designers or architect studios that have worked over time in order to transform Zanotta into a company producing unique pieces of furniture. And in fact, Zanotta, if we benchmark it with the rest of the industry, is a company that always uh, came up with the idea of launching on the market processes that are independent of any life cycle. They can be contemporary in the 60s and contemporary 
this um, in present times too, as Enrico mentioned before. The Quaderna line is a proof of it, one of the examples of the objects developed uh, by uh, the Zanata company was the result of uh, the work with the uh, Super Studio. And we would like to celebrate the 50th anniversary of uh, uh, Quaderna and the uh, 50th anniversary of the Super Studio. We would like to bring in the market uh, um, some novelties. Of course, a Super Studio is a brilliant idea. Super Studio launches uh, Quaderna in 1972, and Zanotta enables Super Studio to work on that. But today we're here to tell you the ways in which an idea that dates back to 1972 can become uh, a business and a relevant product for uh, Zanotta, for Zanotta's business, as well as for the home furnishing sector. This year, we're taking on the market uh, uh, something new, along with the six historical Quaderna products. We now have three more of them, a writing desk that was presented before, a small table, and we also bring on the market a carpet. All of these products feature the same characteristics of uh, the historical Quaderna, they are isotrope products, perfectly isotrope products. The carpet is made of wool coming from New Zealand, and it is hand finished. All the new products belong to the exhibition we're launching today. It is, in fact, a project that does not end up with this event, but we would like to transform it into a, an itinerant exhibition. Milan is, of course, the historical headquarters of the company. Milan means design industry. Milan is going to play a very important role as we are relaunching Milan with the Salon del Mobile, but we, we will also be in uh, New York, in China, and everywhere in the world with all the partners of Zanotta who are implementing the idea of this uh, traveling exhibition that is made of new uh, Quaderna products along with the current catalog of Zanotta products. We have uh, materials, layouts, and the possibility of integrating into your spaces uh, in, in the spaces uh, of our distribution partners this product so that a, an idea of a project gives uh, uh, further enhances the Zanotta brand, a brand that has to be pushed on the market as it represents the company of unique furniture pieces that we're presenting today. They combine functionality, aesthetic features, originality, and uh, um, materials. So it's a combination of industrial work and artisan work, which make uh, Italian a companies unique in the world. This is an instrument that we will give you the opportunity of talking uh, about Zanotta to make it relevant at your points of sales and recreate an event that it's similar to today's event with the material that Zanotta will make available to you so that you can contribute to making the Zanotta brand a relevant brand through the uh, product proposition we bring on the market that, that are unique, different, as well as competitive. Now, uh, we're launching the event. It is up to you to make the most of what we're doing today in order to be capable of uh, doing the same thing uh, combined with the instruments we make available on the market for you. We will be at the uh, Salone del Mobile in June with a, a space of 850 square meters. I will see you there and uh, I hope that that is going to be an important moment for all of us, for Zanotta and for the uh, business we can conduct together. It is important to mention that on top of new products we will also celebrate Quaderna at the Salone del Mobile, the International Milan Furniture Exhibition. So 
we can work on this already. I would like to thank you all for the time you have devoted to that to us, and I would like to thank Enrico and Giuliano for their introduction. And now I would like to show a celebration video that shows what we're doing with Coderna. I thank you all very warm-heartedly.